I'm in the village of Ikita in the Democratic Republic of the Congo with these very happy pygmy kids. Why are they so happy? Find out on this episode of Your Blue Continent. The Congo Basin covers 3.7 million square kilometers with some of the most dense tropical forests on planet Earth. Rainforests in the Congo trap 85 billion tons of carbon dioxide, one of the most important greenhouse gases. However, after decades of war, economic struggles have pressured forest communities to tear down trees for slash and burn agriculture and permit indiscriminate logging activities. To reverse this trend, a partnership between California-based Wildlife Works and British Columbia-based Eric Carbon Offsets, with some support from the Norwegian Rainforest Fund, has created one of the world's largest carbon offset projects to keep the forest intact and use the derived income to promote sustainable development on the ground in forest communities. I knew I needed to see how this all came together in practice. But the challenges of the DRC don't end at the forest edge. Even just a day in the capital of Kinshasa can present challenges you haven't prepared for. Robbery, violence, corruption, and a chaotic lack of infrastructure can shock the unprepared and even made me, at times, feel deeply uncomfortable. But Era Congo, my hosting agency, which employs 300 plus people in the country, did all they could to alleviate the stresses of a Westerner's visit to the Congo's concrete jungle. In a very real way, ERA and Wildlife Works are on the front lines of solving our climate issues, with a three-pronged strategy that preserves the Congolese rainforest while at the same time employing native communities and turning them from being climate change contributors to being Mother Nature's first line of defense. To explain the organizational strategy for this project, which has preserved more than 12 million tons of carbon over 750,000 acres since it began, I met with the director, Dr. Jean-Robert Boangoy, in Kinshasa, who explained their approach. Dr. Boangoy, whose mother grew up near the project site in Inongo, was raised in DRC and studied forest engineering in the U.S. at South Dakota State, later earning his Ph.D. in organizational science. He founded ERA in 2009 and pioneered Red Plus for the DRC, having to personally introduce the concept to the government regulators in his country. There was no Red program. We knew it and we were like going ahead of regulation, ahead of technology. Dr. Boangoy said that even at $10 a ton, selling carbon credits has been a challenge, even with some help from celebrities such as rapper Prince Aya, who released a promotional video citing the project called Dear Future Generations, Sorry, back in 2015. One way of addressing deforestation is through education. Well-educated people will not become deforestation agents. He says that Bantu people are raised to see the forest as an enemy or obstacle to their agricultural activities, and they need to learn about how they can reduce their impact by intensifying their agriculture in a sustainable way. Once they see, I have to use these onions that come from even outside of the country. I can produce it myself, and then they sell. Now, I can produce tomatoes, because potato is like something exotic. They only eat on special occasions. Now, oh, show us. You know, yeah, it's really potato. But it can be for ordinary, not for special occasions anymore. Dr. Bongoy arranged for me to fly to the project zone at dawn the following day. Désavu Valbeca, pourquoi tu t'en vas? Pourquoi tu es parti? Pourquoi tu m'enfuis? Reviens, reviens, reviens mon amour. Inongo, where the Era field operations are based, has a population of more than 45,000 people and is the capital of the northwestern Congolese district of Mayandambe. The district is named for the dark waters of Lake Mayandambe and it lies 275 miles or 443 kilometers northeast of the capital of Kinshasa, roughly the distance between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. At the field office, I was introduced to my translators Daddy and Kom, as well as ERA's department managers who told me about their work and the challenges they confront daily. There are a lot of people in the world who care about the work that you're doing. They're just unaware of it because it's not popular to talk about positive development work that's being done. They describe the three main elements of their work, caring for the community, the biodiversity, and the forest themselves. 
We go now to the forest and to take the measure of the, what carbon we have in our field, to know what kind of biodiversity we have in our field. Over the next few days, I would have the opportunity to observe much of this work. However, one challenge was made clear from the beginning. When running such an extensive operation at a developing world outpost, logistics, specifically acquiring enough fuel, as most buildings simply use generators, was a considerable challenge. We need to hire the lorry car at Kishasa to bring us the gas still here in the We spent much money. To enable more self-reliance, I suggested they consider creating their own biodiesel to fuel their buildings, vehicles, and boats, either using crops or algae. To get a grasp on the important carbon work, I sat down with Pa Nest, ERA's Biomass Department Director. Pa Nest himself was raised in a small village in the north of Congo and managed to study in Kinshasa, never forgetting the people who live in tiny communities like the one he came from. Here, we take all the diameter of the tree, identification, the name of this tree. The ERA crew uses high-tech instrumentation such as tape measures, scopes, and hypsometers to calculate the height and width of the trees and send that information back to their carbon partners in the San Francisco Bay Area, where calculations on the amount of carbon preserved are made. They make these trips to measure the tree health and growth every three months, each time staying in the field for approximately 20 days. I'm enjoying when I'm going to take the measure of the tree because we are going to the forest. It's very cool. We are living with the animals and the community. When are we going to with you? Can't let it to come back again. Once they had explained the process, we crossed the lake on a motorized wooden canoe. The carbon company would provide the GPS coordinates for a location that they wanted the ERA team to inspect, called a placet, identified in the field by an iron marker. Two years ago, if we came here, we can find only the iron because it can't destroy it. Once on site, the team employed different instruments to measure the tree height, depending on whether the treetop was freestanding and visible or obscured by a dense canopy. For this that you see, we can read automatically the height of the tree. When we see that it's too difficult for the men for climbing, we have another kind of material that we call lascope. For this, we put it by the branch and we can calculate how high is the tree. Through this process, the team has registered a reduction of an average of more than 5.7 million tons of carbon per year, and the act of securing that carbon through preserving the forest has the benefit of securing a habitat for the approximate 20 endangered bonobos and 30 vulnerable forest elephants which call this forest their home. Arab biodiversity manager Mathieu explained how the team uses trap cameras and audio recordings to monitor these ecologically valuable animal populations. An elephant in the beginning was in, but was for now we have 20. He explained that they haven't seen any poachers come to kill animals since the project has been active. They've solved poaching by creating other ways for people in the area to make good money and feed their families. And that the others become the keeper of the forest. This approach, progress through education, mirrors ERA's success with eliminating logging activities as they've used money derived from the sale of carbon credits to address the needs of the people in the surrounding communities and teach them more effective, higher-intensity agricultural practices, among other social and practical advancements. ERA organizes community for development and conducts workshops so that locally elected leaders can choose for themselves what kind of projects they'd like to have in their community. Usually when we make the workshop with the community, the community can choose their problem that they care. popular choice is to have a community guard demonstrating the cultivation of different types of food plants which can be grown domestically or as a commercial driver. ERA also helps organize livestock management and fishing and aquaculture activities. In the past, they like only to eat fish and cassava leaves. But now these rural Congolese villages are growing everything from onions, tomatoes, eggplants and cabbage to amaranth, celery and cucumbers. People from this village, uh, before they used to think that this kind of culture is concerning for Europe, uh, not in their village. Yeah. They think it can come only in Europe. Merchants are even coming from across the lake to get them. Can you tell me what having different kinds of food, how that has affected your life? 
after making it the harvest, we sell it to have money for our pupils to study, our son. And then the money, when they after selling it, we are capable to send our son to study at Kishasa, at Inongo, everywhere we like. Villagers are even instructed on how to rotate crops by season, recycle their valuable seeds, and to test plant different crops in areas throughout their village since soil is not the same everywhere. I told them that in a couple of years, I could see some of the villagers blending the new ingredients with their local culinary traditions and creating one of the most innovative and unique restaurants on the planet. In the same way that ERA's garden outreach impacts these communities' economic and nutritional opportunities, it directly impacts their health in communities that have selected to have new health centers built through ERA funding, such as Ibali. ERA has created both permanent and mobile medical clinics, helping more than 3,000 people gain access to vaccinations, health education services, HIV testing, mosquito netting, and even a new emergency response system. My guides took me here, but before we could look at the medical clinic, we first needed to take care of a little business. Now we are going to greet the team. We were treated to a formal welcoming ceremony and dance, complete with the chief's personal hype man in a role similar to the classical European herald, guaranteeing that his boss received a royal welcome. The era representatives exchanged pleasant news with the chief before their visitor was unexpectedly called upon to address the leadership. I would like to thank them for their warm and kind welcome to the village. I have no idea what the future holds, but with God's help, all will benefit. The community's previous facility was built seven years ago and insufficient for the community's growing needs. This is maternity. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Maternity. Clinic director Jacques Sabu shared his hopes for the new medical facility under construction by ERA. What kind of illnesses are most common here? Malaria, blood for... Oh, blood loss. Diarrhea, typhoid, and uh, some kind of the cough that we call in French coqueluche and meningite. Sabu hoped the new facility would have diagnostic equipment and laboratory space. What kind of drugs do you need the most? We like to have uh, some drugs for malaria. We are suffering here a lot to cause a life for going to the hospital in Inongo. Thanks to ERA, the people of Ibali soon will no longer need to travel to Inongo to receive their essential medical treatment. Likewise, more than 8,000 children from more than 10 lakeside villages do not have to travel far away to receive education. In towns like Imbale and Songo, era constructed schools are some of the first solidly constructed buildings in the whole area. They are sharing the two schools. The first one can start by the morning till 12 o'clock. Then they start by 1 o'clock till 4 o'clock. The buildings are constructed by a team of local villagers who learn the art of masonry throughout the construction process. They found a new idea for building the house, okay? How to mix it, the cement and the salt to get there for building the house. Some even learn carpentry skills as they construct the desks that the students use or the uniforms the students wear. All of this is paid through ERA carbon funds. Still more benefits are experienced in the pygmy village of Ikeda. Here, the locals treat era workers as if they're some kind of gods, with the whole village setting up a performance of appreciation whenever they arrive. After ERA provided students with uniforms, copybooks, and pens and began construction of the first real school the students would ever see, their school teacher, Baseke Belonga, penned this song dedicated to the man who had brought them these things. God can bless Mr. Jarobe for having a beautiful school. When you have class in an environment like this, what are some of the challenges that you have? When it rains, they can't stay in the class, they are running away. Here in Akita, there's a social equality element to the work being done here as well. We are helping the Pikmi to be equal with Bantus. That's why we are building this school, because they are busy in our project. Gender equality also plays a role. In Pikmi villages, leadership is matrilineal, though in Bantu culture, that isn't the case. 
I met with Marilyn Elimbe, ERA's female empowerment officer, to better understand the challenges they're facing. Elimbe said it was difficult and counterculture to get women to take positions on boards and committees in most Bantu communities. Girls like it get it. They are afraid. When the one girls like it to be there, but his husband doesn't like he can be there. When the the his wife can be the there, he can, be met, he can stop, he can divorce. She said they didn't have participation quotas and on a 15-person community council you might expect only two to three women to take part. However, Ilembe reported that when it comes to sharing the domestic workload, men are often involved with activities such as cooking and cleaning. Beyond this, ERA also provides assistance with infrastructure concerns by repairing bridges, supporting cross-lake transportation networks, and aiding residents from the project zone in traveling to sit for state examinations. So what did we learn in today's episode? We learned that sometimes the difference between being a contributor to climate change and the planet's first line of defense can be whether you have food in your belly and a positive outlook on your children's future. We learned that sometimes helping a community choose their own future involves instructing them about levers of democracy. And that when you really want to help someone be successful, there's no reason to limit the ways you provide assistance. You can assist in any conceivable sector. I'd like to take a moment to announce something called the Blue Continent Fine Arts Alliance. Located on the websites for Artspan, Fine Art America, and Saatchi Art, you can find fine art images from incredible artists from around the world that I've had the pleasure of meeting throughout my travels to develop this series, and also some of my own work. We'd like to thank Eric Congo and Wildlife Works for their work and for their accommodations to allow us to cover it on our series. If you're interested in what they're doing or would like to purchase carbon at $10 a ton to help these communities you saw in our program, please visit their website. Or if you'd like to contribute your skills or knowledge, send an email to this address. We'd like to thank the sponsors of this series, including all who contributed to our GoFundMe campaign last year, the incredible music from Kanono No. 1, Grand Calle, Staff Benda Bilili, Sam Mangwana, and Plumber Funeral Home in Augusta, Maine. Please subscribe and share widely. Click the link in the corner to subscribe to our channel. In our next adventure, we'll be in Bangladesh, visiting with a local development agency working in one of the most climate-affected countries in the world. Until then, I'm Brennan. Peace. The lake was created by God and we saw only like that. Very scientific answer. Yes.